and welcome to another... I don't know, I, I'm... Yes, this will go up during Vlogtober, but I'm not sure when. So I have no idea at what point in Vlogtober we are at by the time you are seeing this video. I wanted to do, or at least start the Q&A. I will see how many questions I can get through. I'm just pulling them up on my phone. So at the beginning of Vlogtober on day one and two, I asked for questions for a Q&A and you guys really, really responded. And I'm so excited to answer your questions. I'm just going to go through these really randomly in the order that they are just on my phone. You guys asked some really amazing questions. I was so excited. Diving in. I've got a few questions from a relatively new subscriber, Samantha Stevens. Hello, Samantha. So question number one from Samantha. Where is your favorite place to visit in London? Samantha, right off the bat, you're asking a really hard question. I have been to London six times now as an adult. The trip coming up will be my seventh time as an adult. I went once when I was nine. So I've I've been all over and two of those trips were for about three months. So I, I do have a lot of experience in London. To try to answer your question, I'm trying to think of like just where in London have I been the most often? Probably, oh gosh, this is so hard. I really like the city. I like the, the financial district, the old square mile. Um, and one of my favorite walks is to kind of go through the city, through Leadenhall Market, which is this really pretty covered market, down to the river along the north side of the Thames, past like the Tower of London, cross on the Tower Bridge to the South Bank and then go up the South Bank. If I only have a smaller amount of time, I'll usually cross back over on the Millennium Bridge, but sometimes I'll walk all the way down to Westminster Bridge. So I just, I love that general area. It's just got all the big touristy sites, but it's also just really cool to walk around. I'll usually stop at like the Cafe Nero in the, I don't know if it's pronounced the OXO Tower or the OXO Tower, um, but there's a Cafe Nero there and there's really pretty views of like the Millennium Bridge and St. Paul's Cathedral. I also love just hanging out around St. Paul's Cathedral and one of my favorite places to shop is right behind the cathedral, the One New Chain Shopping Center, and then there's a bunch of shops on, sh on Cheapside there. That, Ted Baker, is one of my favorites. That's how I'm going to answer your question, but I feel like I have many, many favorites. Samantha, the second question is what is your level of prof proficiency in French? So I get asked a lot both if I'm French and do I speak French because my channel name is in French. And I'm beginning to feel like my ch I probably should have chosen a different channel name when I started. That's just the name of my existing YouTube account and it sounded cool so I went with it. But I'm not French and I speak very bad French. I did take it all four years of high school and I took one semester of it in college, but I'm not good and you really don't want to hear me pronounce it. I have a really atrocious American accent when I speak French. I can read it better than I can speak it and hear it at this point. So it's pretty bad. It is in there and I feel like if I were to spend like a month in France immersed in the language, it probably would come back. So I'd say it's my proficiency is pretty poor, but I have promise. I have potential. Samantha's third question, were your interests always in fashion slash drama slash literature or did you imagine yourself in a different field when you were younger? Yes, I definitely bounced around. I mean, I've always generally been interested in the humanities and in the arts. My undergrad was in theater. I had experience as a costume designer for many years. And then it wasn't until grad school that I started switching more into more academic subjects. When I was in high school, if you told me that at age 35 I'd be doing a PhD in English rhetoric and composition, I wouldn't have even understood what that meant and I would have been absolutely shocked. So I, I ha my interests have changed. When I was in high school, I thought, I swore I was gonna be an actor. And then I swore I was gonna be a costume designer. And now I'm on my way to being a professor, but I could just as easily end up working in a number of other academic, but non-teaching roles. So 
who knows. And then her fourth question, if you could time travel to any point in the past, when and where would you go? As a Doctor Who fan, I love questions about time travel. If I could go back in time, there are too many good time periods to choose from. Okay, because I'm looking at my bookshelf and I can see my copy of Fashion on the Ration, I think it would be really fascinating to go back to World War II era London. Probably very, very scary and dangerous with the Blitz and the air raid. It's just such a fascinating time. I just think that would be really interesting. So that's one answer, but there's there's a number. The Victorian era would be cool. So yeah, I just need a TARDIS. Moving on to the next set of questions, Lindsay McDonald, who has an amazing channel. You should all go check it out. So she asked three questions. Her first question is, where is one place you haven't visited yet that you'd most like to travel to? This is a good question because there are a lot of places I would love to visit, but I always go to London. I would really love to visit China. Some of the ancient cities, a student of mine is from, I can't pronounce it, but it's with a, an, it starts with an X. But I think visiting some of the older ancient cities, I'd really love to see the Great Wall. I am obsessed with pandas, so if I could visit a panda sanctuary, I think that would be amazing. So that's one place, but there are definitely many. Her second question, what is one beauty product that you think you will continue to repurchase forever? Butter London's top coat for nails, for sure. I will always repurchase that and Zoya's nail polish remover. It's just hard to imagine anyone coming out with better formulations of either of those products. Other than that, I'm trying to think of like beauty, like cosmetics, but I do switch around a lot and I do test out different things a lot. I have yet to find that kind of holy grail lipstick or mascara or you know something like that even though there are products that I have repurchased I'm still looking for something better than them so they're not perfect if that makes sense but butter London's top coat definitely because it's the best top coat I've ever found and her third question if you could design costumes for any TV show past or present what would it be and why oh good question Lindsay I was so excited when I saw that one TV show past or present okay one that's jumping to mind is because I thought the costumes were always so well done alias with Jennifer Garner because every week she had a different alias and a different cool costume that she had to have so I think that would be fun in terms of like contemporary clothing and costuming alias would probably be my pick in terms of historical there's probably other shows but I feel like I'm going to go with Outlander. Maybe Game of Thrones, but I feel like I like Outlander better. The plaids, the tartans that they have are just amazing and the way that they make them. I love the behind the scenes documentaries and stuff. So yeah, we'll, we'll go with Alias and Outlander. <laughs> I'm gonna pick two. Okay, so those are Lindsay's questions. Again, go check out her channel. The next questions are from Sarah Sonatina, who also has a fabulous channel that you should go check out. She's got two. So what is your biggest guilty pleasure? Sleeping in until noon or just not setting an alarm and just spending half the day in bed. Uh, you know, there's so many things that I should be doing on a regular basis and most times I cannot really justify staying in bed that late, but still do it. And then her second question is, do you believe in any conspiracy theory or theories? If so, which ones? I have an interesting relationship with conspiracy theories. I tend to think that most of them are completely bogus. Like everyone who says that we didn't land on the moon, we did. But it's still fascinating to listen to the people who are convinced that we didn't. But in terms of conspiracy theories and any that I believe in, you know, things like the Mandela effect, I tend to think that there is a logical explanation for most things. I tend to not believe in a lot of conspiracy theories, but it's still fun to hear about them and to read about them or watch documentaries and like think about them a bit. So. That was a fun question. Thank you, Sarah. Next question. Pages and Polish. So Shannon, you should definitely check out Shannon's channel. Her question was similar. It was also like Lindsay's, where's somewhere you'd love to travel that you haven't been to already? So I'm going to give each of you guys a different answer so that I can kind of cheat the system here. So the answer to Lindsay's question was China. For Shannon, I'd really love to go to Australia. 
I'd also really love to go to New Zealand. I'm a huge fan of the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings film. Oh, also Japan, because the Kyoto Costume Institute, I, oh, I would love to visit because they have the most amazing collection of historic dress. We'll go with, we'll go with that as well. Okay, next question. It's from Tamsin, Tamsin Lena, who has a great channel. I'm feeling I'm going to say that about everyone, um, every other YouTuber that's asked a question. You just need to check out their channels. But Tamsin had a couple. So she asked, what are all the studies slash PhDs you have done? I'm only working on one PhD, Tamsin. But I have done two master's degrees. So I have a master's in media arts, which is basically film and TV studies and I have a master's in rhetoric and composition, which is the same thing I'm doing my PhD in, and my big project for that master's was on Bond Girls and costume design, and I will probably do a separate video on that. And then my undergraduate degree is in theater arts. So theater, film, and then now English, and then the PhD in English. And then she asked, how long are you coming to London for? I will be there for about 10 days. Her final question is, what are you the most excited for for London? I am excited for everything. I just want to be back in the city. I want to go for the walk that I was explaining in Samantha's question. I want to go shopping in Covent Garden. Winter Wonderland will still be going on in Hyde Park, so I think we're going to try to do that maybe the first or second day that we're there and still like adjusting to jet lag and stuff. I want to go shopping on Oxford Street. I want to go to Boots and I want to go to Primark. And yeah, I'm excited for everything. I just, I feel so completely at home and the most myself when I am in London, if that makes any kind of sense. So I am just super, super, super excited to be back in London and back in my favorite place. I'm excited for everything, Tamsin. And hopefully, if you can find a, a day to come down to London, hopefully we could meet up. I'm definitely happy to meet any of the London area YouTubers that that watch me and who I watch as well. So if anyone wants to come to London and have a cup of coffee at Cafe Nero or Costa with me, just send me a private message through social media. So Belinda Laurie, who has an amazing channel, and she hasn't been doing videos because she just had a baby, but you should all go watch the videos that are currently up on her channel and subscribe to her channel because I'm sure she will be back to making videos as soon as she can. She just has the most amazing personality. You will love her videos, so go check her out. Her question is, what do you plan to do once you finish up your PhD? Good question, Belinda. I wish I had an answer. Get a job. Get a job. I'm really not going to be that picky because I have a lot of student loans to pay back. Because <laughs> education, especially graduate education, isn't cheap in the US, in case anyone isn't aware. Getting a job is top priority. I would love to be a professor somewhere, but I'm also open. I will be looking for jobs all over and do all kinds of things. I would be happy to move to a foreign country and teach English. I would be thrilled to work in a museum setting. There are a number of fashion collections and fashion and textiles departments and museums all over the world, and I would just die happy if I could work in any of them. So I will be kind of applying, the, the net will be cast very widely. And I really would love to move internationally. You're just gonna have to stay tuned and see what happens after I graduate because I really don't know what's going to happen. And then I'm gonna answer one more set of questions because the lighting in here is starting to get a bit weird. Any time will be the last questions um, on this part of the Q&A. Um, Annie Time has a great channel and she's super sweet, so you should definitely go check her out. Her questions are, if you had to choose a TV character, past or present, as a best friend, who would it be? Oh, Annie, that's a great question. Well, Sydney Bristow from Alias would be really good, because not only is she just super kick-ass and could definitely, like, save you if you had any problems, but she's also a really good friend to her friends in the show. I think that was one of the things I loved about that show and the way that J.J. Abrams kind of directed and presented the character of Sydney Bristow. She's so complex and she's got so many different facets and she is this really great solid friend but she's also a super amazing spy. Yeah, we'll go with Sydney Bristow. Her second question, did you read a book growing up that had an impact on how you saw the world slash profoundly changed you and what was it? 
I'm looking at my books. <laughs> You're asking like all the deep complicated questions, Annie. I read a series of novel by a couple of Christian fiction authors, Lynn and Gilbert Morris. They're a father-daughter writing team about a female doctor in the 1860s. Maybe we'll go with that. That, that did change me. I really liked those books because the lead character was a female doctor at a time when it wasn't a career and that was a huge theme in the book, like the, the difficulties and the discrimination that she faced. But there was also this kind of subtopic. She was a huge clothes horse. She loved clothing. She loved fashion. And the descriptions of the dresses that she would wear were amazing. And there were a number of lines in each of the books that would reference this, where either she would say it or the character, another character would talk about it to someone else that because she was someone working in a male-dominated field, she would dress in a very feminine, Victorian age appropriate way for women to dress as a way of counteracting that. And that's probably the first time I was really exposed to this idea of the power of clothing and the rhetoric of clothing. And obviously at age 14, 15, 16 when I was reading these books, I did not have that terminology for it. But what I was reading in those books now is definitely connected to the research that I do. And uh, even though they're fiction novels, it definitely was kind of the early seeds of the research that I'm doing now. Yeah, I, like that just came to me as I was reading this and thinking about this. And then the third question, because I can tell the lighting in here is really getting bad. Sophie's Choice question, but if you had to, would you never watch a TV show again or never watch another movie? Once upon a time, I think that would have been a really difficult question, but these days, I just don't watch that much television anymore. And so if I had to choose, I don't think I could live without film. I mean, that being said, like, if that means that I'm also giving up all the current shows, to never watch Doctor Who again, to not be able to watch the fourth series of Sherlock... Okay, now we are getting into Sophie's Choice territory, Annie. Darn it! I don't know. I really... Oh. Current shows aside, saying that I've or to give me a pass when it comes to Doctor Who and Sherlock. There's just something so powerful about film and about cinema. To never watch another James Bond film, to never watch another Richard Curtis film, because I just watched About Time last night. I mean, I'm looking at this stack of DVDs of movies sitting by my Blu-ray player that I want to rewatch because it's been a while since I've watched them. And I think that's why I like shows like Doctor Who and Sherlock and Outlander and Game of Thrones because those are all shows that have a very cinematic quality to them. Okay, my lighting is starting to get really dark. I'm hoping this will still look okay. So there's still a ton more questions. This is probably going to end up being like a three or four part Q&A. Thank you to everyone who asked questions that I answered in this one and the rest of you I promise I will get to you. There were just so many amazing questions that there was no way I was going to get them all in one video. Thank you for asking such great questions. Thank you for being so invested in my channel and in my videos and supporting me. Stay tuned for the next part and I will see you all again soon. Bye-bye.